Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Zompocalypse Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Shink Shinken, and today we're talking about real ghost stories by real people. I got all these stories from Facebook, and I was talking to my guest, Cody Stubbs Stablowski, and a little history about us. Him and I have been friends for 25 plus years. The reason why I wanted to talk to him is he's he does believe in ghosts, but he never really experienced any type of paranormal or ghost activity before. So I wanted to talk to him and see what are some of his thoughts on the stories I told him. Now, I have, first off, I wanted to apologize for the quality of the audio that you're about to listen to is because I'm so experimenting with everything that's going on. Um, I'm so new, so please, um, please be easy on me when you review this. But I do appreciate every single, I appreciate everybody's feedback. I will learn and I will continue on learning and trying to improve this podcast. But before I go on, I would like to thank everyone for listening and if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and be part of the horde. If you're if you're back, welcome back to the horde, everybody. And let's continue on between the discussion between myself and Cody. First person I'm going to read off, his name is Martin. And so this is his story. All right, so here, here it goes. So about six weeks ago, I was at a family gathering that took place in a park. I believe it was a park in Pennsylvania. So the story goes like this. I had to go to the restroom, but this was a big park, so the bathroom was a good distance away from my family. So I walked on and got to the bathroom, which was also pretty big, but I remember clearly that there was also a couple using it. They entered one stall together, so my first guess was okay, they are probably doing something personal, so I washed up and walked out. A couple of hours after this, I went there again and I saw the same couple again after the same stall. So I'm thinking to myself, damn, they're super horny, but this time was different. I don't know why, but something told me to check the stall because they both got super quiet. Like just pure silence. It was abnormally so. I went to the stall and I knocked and respectively asked if they were okay. I got no response, so I opened the door to find no one there. But I did find some little plastic box with some small items in it. So I put on some plastic gloves and opened it, though I probably shouldn't have as it wasn't mine, but well, you know how curiosity gets the best of it. When I opened the box, I remember finding like some holy items, some coins, even found some gold Babe Ruth card. I'd say it was maybe 10 years old, and I also remember smelling something so disgusting like rotten meat, and I heard laughing, two voices, a man and a woman, I'd say. They sounded like they were around their early 20s, maybe 22. So I closed the box and stepped out, but no one was there. About 10 minutes went by, and now it's freezing cold in there. On a hot summer day, so it made no sense. I then started to feel frightened, so I closed the door and stepped out. It was a lot warmer outside now, which was even more confusing. But at this point, I already knew that something paranormal was going on, so I disregarded my fear. I stepped in and saw the same couple for a third time. Except this time, they looked different. They looked pale. I remember standing there watching as they walked into the stall and vanished, so I decided to leave it be. But as I was leaving, I heard a voice tell me, take this with you. Suddenly. The box moved towards me, hitting my foot. After that, I heard another voice, a female voice, and she said to me to take care of the memories now. I didn't know what else to do, so as respect to them, I took the box, buried it, buried it 
by the bathroom, so I started to walk away once again. I heard a voice say, thank you. So as the night progressed, I went back to my family and we went home. Where on the way, I fell asleep during the drive. I remember so clearly I had a dream about this couple. Smile at me. Within this dream, a male handed me this, that same card I saw in the box. It was a very scary experience due to the fact that I was already there and I actually saw these people. Suddenly, my mom woke me up and had me something to me. And this was where it scared me the most. She handed me a baseball card and told me I had dropped it by the bench where we were sitting on. So I guess, to be frank, this is something they wanted me to have. So no, I was holding this card, which I... Holding this card, which was, I guess, passed down to me. And well, due to my experience, I needed to know if my family knew something about this park's history and my aunt told me about 10 years ago a couple was killed by the park by the bathroom about four blocks away where specifically I don't know nor did she so it remains a mystery to me I guess I was meant to meet these people I haven't figured out yet but I definitely appreciate what was given to me I feel honored to have been able to meet them to know what they have a story in this park. Proof, if asked to, but I promise you, with a solid heart, what I told you is 100% true. So what do you think? Listen. Number one. That whole curiosity thing. Mm -hmm. It's okay to step back and run like <laughs> a little girl. I'm going to tell you right now, nobody's going to judge you. I'm not. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh, but I, I honestly... mean, <laughs> you know, he says curiosity got the better of my. I, look, I got it, man. I you know, oh. you, sometimes you got to let it lie. I, that's that's a cool story, though. No, that it's was that was a, that was a very neat story. I mean, I, I thought it was really cool. Sorry for like you know me butchering the story. I, I'm just trying to say that I'm just reading by the way the people say, so if anything that they say is like, I'm not editing what they say because I figure I want it to be legit, you know, but from their own words. Uh, no, the, the story was really, really awesome. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really cool. Um... I think I want to say yes. It is. It was a hundred percent true. I mean, there's probably some weird ass shit that happened to people, but with this, is that scary? It's more like, <laughs> damn, you know. Um, what time did he say this happened? Late in the night? Uh, he didn't really say specifically. Okay. Well. It would be unnerving. <clears throat> Let's put it that way. I want to say is probably when, uh, sometime in the evening, knowing the sun's still up but it's still kind of setting. But <clears throat> <clears throat> I kind of want to say that. Um, I kind of want to say that time of day. You know, I'm not, creepy. yeah, that was, it's, it's creepy, but at the same time, I thought it was a good story. I mean, it was kind of yeah, heartfelt, no, was heartfelt, um, nothing like, oh my God, you know, I'm going to die. It's kind of like, it's unnerving, I guess you yeah. can say. Yeah. Oh man. Well, but do you think it's true? Do you, do you, do you believe this, what he said, what Marn said? was true yeah I okay I, I I would believe that something like that could be true I don't know if his is true <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean anybody anybody can go on the internet and write something that's the only thing 
But you know, I mean, yeah, you you could see, I could see something like that happening. Mm-hmm. Creepy as it is, <clears throat> yeah. right? I think I believe it is one hundred percent true. I mean, I've heard stories people run into, like weird phenomenons, uh, uh, things that happen to them, like maybe. Um, like these these spirits were unrested, and so they can they saw this gentleman walking into the bathroom where maybe they died or whatever in the bathroom stall, or maybe not in that bathroom stall, and they maybe died before that part was built or before those bathrooms were built. We don't know. He doesn't even know. So I'm thinking maybe the couple have passed away. So I believe 100%. Like I said before, I think this story is hundred percent true. So, yeah, that that, that was a, uh, how many how many stories did you find? There's like a well, shit ton. I, I imagine there there are a ton, but I mean, from Facebook, I found as of right now, I'm just finding random ones right now. There's here's a sh very short one. Her name is Lisa. And this had happened a year ago. I said, about a year ago, my daughter told me one night at 3 a.m. ish, she heard a knock on the window. After which, she said, okay, time for bed. I was like, okay, and didn't think any more about it. A few nights later, I fell asleep watching TV. It was about 3.30 a.m. when I heard a knock on the window. I fucking froze in fear. A few minutes later, it opened again. It wasn't loud or urgent, just a tap, tap, tap. I live on the second floor of a secure building with no balconies. It hasn't happened since. My partner's son was murdered in a parking lot 10 years ago. I find dimes randomly all the time as well. That was the whole story? That's the whole story. Oh, okay. Wow. That you weren't you weren't joking. That was a short story. <laughs> I told you it's uh. Yeah, that was that was that was not that creepy. Not that is cruel. I mean, I guess if somebody was knocking on your window, that might be creepy. I thought it was kind of a little creepy, a little bit because I mean, if you live in a second store of building, secure building, mind you, with no balconies, and hear like a tap tap tap. Motherfucker, I'm running. <laughs> you know, I I have had that experience. What? Really? Yes. Tell me, tell me, now, tell I, me. No, no, no. It, yeah, don't don't misunderstand it. It wasn't paranormal. It was a it was a tree. What? Oh, come on. What? It was a tree. I I'm just saying. <sighs> a tree scared me. Okay. Okay. I mean. It happens. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the paranormal is actually pretty fucking scary. I mean, I will admit. This was. God, I was a kid. I don't remember how old I was. I want to say maybe nine or ten years old. And I was living on Vesper at the time. Um, <clears throat> remember the old barn in my house? The big ass barn? Yes. Okay. I, I never really told anybody this because I I'm I was I was surrounded by people who didn't really believe in the paranormal or ghosts. And plus, so I didn't really think nothing of it because it just fucking happened. So, anyways, I was at home alone and my parents were at work. Uh, my mom and my stepdad were at work, and I believe my sister was up in her room uh, doing homework doing doing something by herself in a room and I decided to stay downstairs watch some TV and it was kind of maybe 9, 10 o'clock at night so we were kind of watching late night and it was the weekend so we were uh, allowed to stay up late at night and the barn was to give more illustration to the people who are listening the barn was a, it was diangle from the house, as I get after the right, you see, a, like a garage 
it was a garage and it was it was the size of a barn it's kind of like one of those garages has in a upstairs and in the back it has like a big ass storage area where you can like put your farm equipment or whatever whatnot in but my stepdad turned it into more of a uh put his tractors his one tractor and a few other things so you can work on so kind of like a work uh, like a working area for him and the four wheelers and whatever whatnot but i digress um <clears throat> And if you walk off more to the right, more of a diagonal, you will see the barn. It was a it was a writer sized barn. It was built in 1952 in a site on one of the silos. So at that time, has been there for 40 plus years, give or take 40, 60 years. So I was just looking outside randomly to give myself a you know a drink of water or something. The light in the milk house turned on by itself okay i thought maybe it was a faulty wiring or maybe i left it on because my sister and i like to go in the barn you know to play around and sometimes we like to go and explore inside the milk house because we never really saw a milk house in person Okay, no big deal. Maybe it flipped on by itself. I turned around, got myself a drink, then all of a sudden, poof, shut right off again. Oh. I, I have no idea what could have happened. You know, that was my first experience of seeing something turn on and off. Yeah, I've, that's kind of weird. Yeah, that's, it's weird. It's like... I never really like, you know, going around. I never really like going outside at night. I'm, I will admit I am kind of afraid of the dark. <clears throat> Are you afraid of the dark? Um, in town, no. In the country, yes. Do you, do you sleep with a nightlight? No. I do not. Oh. I sleep with a okay. fan on. The reason why... I'm afraid it at night <clears throat> because I watched a movie called Pet Cemetery by Stephen King and it freaked really? me out. Yes. And my parents built, uh, buried some dogs in the back and my stepdad to help me to face my fears is to walk around the barn. Maybe it was my fear, but I felt something weird, like something was watching me, something was following me, you know? Hmm. It's just like you, you, you have that feeling you ever get like something's watching you? Occasionally, yeah. I've had it, yeah. It's, yeah. It's that's, pretty unnerving. Yes, that's what I felt the whole entire time I was walking around that bar before I fell. I never get anything creepy feeling when I'm like around that barn. Mm -hmm. I there's times I do feel like there is something else in that barn. I've had all the weird experiences. Another story, another short story. After that incident happened later on that night when I went to bed, there's occasional times I hear like footsteps going up and down the stairs it wasn't any of the dogs because our dogs walked up and down those stairs like a bunch of fucking cattle no there were regular human footsteps like one step and here the you know when you put your foot down on the landing it'll creak my parents weren't home and when they're home they were sleeping you can easily hear when they get up because their bed squeaks so I don't know <laughs> hmm what do you think I yeah yeah, yeah nighttime scary <laughs> nighttime can be pretty scary in the country mm -hmm. I'll tell you that 
I mean, I never had anything like that, but I mean, <clears throat> yeah, you walk outside and pitch dark out, you see a pair of eyes, and you run like a little girl. Yeah, yeah. I've done it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not afraid of the dark. I'm like, I'm afraid of what's in the dark. Right. Like you, you can say. Well, I get it. I get it. I mean, I can walk outside. I can walk around town. I can walk out like where there's no lights, when there's houses around. I'm not. I'm not afraid. I can do that. I've done that all the time. But when it comes to the countryside, I'm flipping the fuck out because you don't know what's in there. You can't see shit. There's coyotes, there's wolves, there's bears, there's all that shit. Ooh, this is a police officer in East London. All right, London. That's full of scary stuff. Hell yeah. His name. His name's RJ. Good evening. I would like to share my experience with you. I have been a police officer in East London for 20 years. Approximately 17 years, I was on foot patrol, walking the beat. On my own, one night, I walked past Street Patrick's Catholic Cemetery in Laystone. Leighton Stone, East London. It was about 2 a.m. and other, other than a few foxes here and there, there was not much going on. Probably due to it being a horrible, cold, rainy night. As I walked past the cemetery, I became aware of someone looking at me. I glanced over and noticed a woman standing approximately 100 yards away from me. Due to the being dark and bad weather conditions, the light was poor, so visibility was some that restricted. I would describe the figure as a gray and black shape. Looked like it had a long bell shaped dress. My initial thought was that a lady in distress likely to be suffering with some form of mental health issue who need assistance. The main entrance gates were locked due to the time of the night, but having walked this neighborhood for years, I knew a small gap further back in the railings that would enable me to access, so I doubled back to where I could get in. While doing so, I lost sight of, of the figure. Upon entering the cemetery, which a large flat area of no hills or inclines, I looked around, but there was no trace of the figure. I proceeded to walk to the rough location where I saw the figure standing, but the snow sign of anyone or anything. At six foot five tall, I had good line of vision, so while remaining stationary, I did a 360 degree visual scan of my surroundings. I also called out stating I was a police constable and do you know, do you need, I was a police constable and do you, and do you need any help, but was met with no response. I again stood and looked around for a few more minutes. At, at this point, I looked down at the closest grave I was standing by and shined my torch on the headstone and was a small, un, unposing memorial which read Marie Janet Kelly, and for some reason, my that name stuck with me. With no one in the cemetery other than myself alive, I then made my way out, headed back to the Lane Police Station to conclude my shift. Now, I wanted to be ridiculed by my colleagues, I didn't much mention this incident. A few years later, upon talking to the local resident, I got, no, <clears throat> I got to know quite well, who was a nice old gentleman in his late 80s at the time, who was born in the same house. He still resided in a few doors along the cemetery. He informed me that one of the Jack, Jack the Ripper's victims named Mary Kelly has been buried in there. He went on to say that he was aware of several local residents over the decades seeing her ghost. And it was likely, likely it was her that I saw. Well, that's my experience. I know what I saw, whether it was a ghost or not, I don't know. But thought I'd share it with you. Hopefully you found it interesting. Wow. I might have trouble sleeping tonight. <laughs> I said might. That was actually pretty uh pretty intense. Yeah. 
Yeah, some of these are, uh, some of these will get you. Hell yeah. Man. Yeah, I haven't read ghost stories in a while. This is true shit right here. Oh, I honestly, in, in my opinion, I mean, it's kind of cliche-ish. I mean, no disrespect to RJ at all, whatsoever. And, uh, but it's kind of weird that he did find himself, like, in the cemetery. I mean, he did his job. He went in to do his duty and to see if there's a woman under distress. Okay. Yeah. And, and it doesn't help much that it was late at night and you saw a figure and it was ra cold and rainy. And maybe he did see someone. I mean, I mean, Jack the Ripper back in the, what was it, 1800s, if I'm not mistaken? The only killer that was not caught. <laughs> and seeing a ghost from... Uh, from the cemetery, from especially that day and age, especially, I mean, I, when I was reading that during that, I was like, oh, th he was explaining how the dress was a bell. You don't see that nowadays. And I'm figuring, well, it's got to be back in the 1900s or an 1800s time. So maybe, I'm thinking that's, I, I've, I, if it's kind of, I'm kind of on the fence about this story because, like I said, it was kind of cliche, but, I feel that he maybe did encounter something paranormal. I've, I've, maybe he did run into a spirit. Well, I mean, he was in a cemetery, so I mean, oh. right? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, maybe it was. Uh... I mean, we don't know. You know, he, maybe he's telling truth, and he's just <laughs> just ended up in a damn cemetery. I don't know. <laughs> and must have been one of his routes because if, if I'm not mistaken most of London over there are... Oops. Uh, London, yes. East London. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken that they uh, go by foot. Freaking Jack the Ripper, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that would run, that reminds me of, yeah. Yeah, for sure. 1880-ish. Yeah. The Warner. Yeah, something like that. That's, um, I mean, that's not when he was born. I, he, I, I can't remember his crime. I I read it a while ago. Pretty cool, actually. That was that was interesting. But this isn't about Jack the Ripper, so. <laughs> no, it's not. But it's kind of interesting. I mean, imagine running to a ghost from Jack the Ripper and maybe talking to it, see what the experiences are. But and eh, that's never going to happen. But anyways, here's. Another, it's more of a question um, than, a, than a story. But uh, Tim asked, Do you ever hear the voice of a beloved deceased parent? Have you ever tried to call someone and realize that they're no longer able to take your call? I do. I sometimes even hear them in my peripheral vision. My mom has been gone for six years today. And I continue to feel her presence. It's a good feeling. Anyone else had these kinds of experiences? No. No. Did, did that did that answer that? <laughs> no. 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 Absolutely not. I mean, I you know, I, my mom is still kicking. You know bless her little heart yeah she's a she's my dad a, is no longer yeah i remember i was i, I have i have not i've not felt him but you weren't really close to your dad though no no yeah no that's I, the I thing was not. i mean <clears throat> i'm sorry if you I, i'm sure when your mom does kick the bucket i'm sure she's gonna hunt your ass well all things considered <laughs> I think I gave her a relatively easy job. Want to stay at home? I was an easy child to deal with. Uh, I didn't you say run so. around with swords and <laughs> lighters and start things on fire. Or have your sister. Or have your best friend come over and wrestle each other by a fire. Yeah, so she's probably yeah she's probably gonna haunt me. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, 
I personally, I, my both of my parents are still alive and kicking. Um, I had a few close calls with both of my parents. My dad um, needed cancer. Uh, I had cancer, bone like bone cancer and uh, double bypass surgery. And my mom had breast cancer, and of course both of them and both of them did survive. But I had grandparents and of course other people who I was close to. Um, my my gr my grandparent who I was closest to was my dad's like my dad's mom. I was extremely close to her. Um, I never. I felt her presence maybe a couple of times, and of course I dreamt about her. Um, and with my buddy passed away, his name was Jesse, uh, who passed away over in Iraq. Uh, I felt his presence a couple of times too. Um, but other than that, I, uh, no, I really never had any, well, I did, but that's not by parents, by friends and family members, yes, I have. So, um, that brings me to another story. <laughs> when I was living on my own after Jesse passed away, um, I went to take a shower and I had a stack of Xbox games nicely stacked up. And I went to take a shower and after I got done I got dressed and... I went back out to the living room and the games, all my games were toppled over, four. I didn't have a cat. I didn't have any type of pet. I was living on my own. And the... A uh, quick question. Yes. Were you drunk? Mm-mm. Okay, well, that I was... rules all my theory. <laughs> it, was, it was just toppled over like somebody just pushed the stack over. So... I think he was, I think Jesse kind of messed with me for a little bit when I was living my own, just to, because him and I always picked on each other, and that was just pretty much um, him kind of fucking with me, even after life. 